This episode of Phone Buff is brought to you by Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash phone buff to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash phone buff for your free audiobook. What's up, guys? David here with another episode of Phone Buff Q&As, the show where you get to ask me just about any question you have related or unrelated to mobile tech and where I get to ask you guys weekly questions via polls on our Facebook fan page. You can be a part of the polls by liking us on Facebook and get your questions answered in upcoming videos by asking us on Twitter. I'll put all the links you need down below, but with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Terang asks, Hey, my S4 is getting a little bit slower. Can you please tell me how to speed up the phone? Okay, so I already made a video covering the top 5 speed tips to make your Android phone faster, which I'll link down in the description box below, but for the S4 specifically, I'd recommend turning off some of those S features that you may not even be using, disable the double tap for S-Voice feature on the home button, and try restarting your phone every once in a while to help clear out the RAM. These tips, in addition to the top 5 I tell you about in the other video, should definitely help boost your performance just a little bit. Kamal asks, why doesn't Nokia use Android? They would have demolished Samsung a long time ago. There's no question that Nokia or Nokia can make an incredible Android phone. I mean, the high-end Lumias the company has put out so far have great build quality, absolutely amazing cameras, solid speakers, and just about everything else you'd want in a smartphone when it comes to hardware. Which leaves thousands of Nokia fans, like you, wondering why the company doesn't just go ahead and make an Android-powered Lumia. Well, while the possibility of Nokia making an Android phone will technically always exist, the likelihood of it actually happening, unfortunately, isn't all that great. Why? Well, it really comes down to the business side of things. Nokia decided a long time ago that it would have a better chance of success by partnering with Microsoft and being the leader on the Windows Phone platform compared to fighting for second or maybe even third place on Android behind Samsung, which, by the way, just completely dominates Android right now, being responsible for nearly 95% of the profits earned from selling Android phones in the first quarter. Now, think about that number for just a second. If Samsung was responsible for 95% of the profits in the first quarter, that means a company like Nokia would have to differentiate itself from all the other Android manufacturers like LG, Sony, HTC, Huawei, etc., who are all scratching and clawing for that remaining 5%. And on that note that Nokia could have demolished Samsung a long time ago, all you have to do is just take one look at a company like HTC and the struggles it's had financially despite making arguably some of the best Android phones out, and you quickly realize that maybe Nokia made the right decision by going with Windows Phone and partnering with a company with deep pockets like Microsoft. Samsung just has too much of a grip in the Android market right now for someone to come in and beat it anytime soon, and considering that Nokia sold more phones than anyone once upon a time, their best shot at reclaiming that title might just be with Microsoft in the corner. Jaytin asks, What do you think about the rumors that the iPhone 5S will have a fingerprint scanner? Rumors about the iPhone 5S having a fingerprint scanner have been going around for a really, really long time now, so I'd be kind of surprised if they don't turn out being true, but as of right now, most of the rumors point to the home button doubling as a scanner itself, allowing you to just swipe your finger down the button to potentially unlock your phone. Now, that in and of itself is really, really exciting and should make the process of unlocking your phone a lot more convenient than your traditional password, but I think that's only scratching the surface of what a fingerprint scanner would actually bring to the table. I can see the fingerprint scanner being used for things like activating different user profiles, automatically entering in stored passwords, being used to make payments on NFC with Passwork or potentially NFC if the iPhone 5S supports it, and a whole lot more. In short, I think it'll be that big innovation that Apple has been looking for so long as they implement it in the right ways. With that said though, they may or may not be the first ones to come to market with it, considering that recent leaks suggest that the HTC One Max will have a fingerprint scanner and it might be announced on September 4th, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I think Apple will have a much better ability to implement it since it does control iOS completely, whereas HTC you know, only has their skin and they don't control Android as a whole. I asked you via PhoneBuff.com's weekly poll, what are the most important specs in a smartphone? I let you guys vote for up to three things and the top three specs you guys voted for as the most important are, in order, the battery at number one, the processor at number two, and finally the display at number three. As far as the results go, I have to say that I agree with you guys. If I could only control up to three specs on a smartphone, I think those would be the ones I'd choose. But if I had up to five specs I could control, I think I'd go with RAM and probably the camera next up on my list. But I want to know what would be your top five. Let me know down in the comments below. Alright guys, that's it for me in this episode of Fun Buff Q&As. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can be part of the show. And 
Subscribe to the channel for more mobile technology videos just like this. Thank you for watching.